Blessed are you, he said, when people insult you falsely and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Nobody likes to be insulted. No one likes to, to put someone up to your face and say something about you. Verbal persecution is far worse than physical persecution. Well, no, Brother Cotham, I'd rather have somebody say something to me than to take me over here and whip me with whips. You see, the physical may be only of a short time. The verbal can be over a very long time. To take abuse for one's faith is often beyond some people, especially if it comes from the family. Since I've been here, I've known people in our congregation that are no longer members of this congregation because family people talked them out of it or said, you don't need to be there. I'm not going to tell you who or where. That's not for anybody to discuss or, or talk about, but you know it's true. Sometimes family members have a stronger attraction than anything that Jesus can say. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 36, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. How sad that is, and yet, how true. Now, in 2 Timothy 3, 12, it shouldn't surprise us. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Did you see the word will there? They will be. Now, if you've never had any persecution, either verbal or physical, for your faith, I'm not going to say, well, shame on you. Go out and get yourself beat up. I'm not going to say that. But I would ask you to say, what have I been doing with my life if I've never had anyone confront me about Christianity? 1 Peter 4, 16. If you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Be thankful that you have the opportunity. You see, you're giving glory to God when you suffer for his name. I don't want us to be like Ignatius, the patristic back in the second or third century, that said, oh, I welcome martyrdom. Come and get me. That'll send me to heaven. No, you want to live here on this life as long as God lets you. You want to use your common sense. You want to give glory to God with every blessing he will give you. Live every day as long as you can. Don't ask for God to throw you over the cliff or run you down with a truck or something. Simply remember it's going to happen. And if you suffer, don't be ashamed, but praise God in that example. 1 Peter 2.23, what about Jesus himself? Peter said, when they hurled their insults at him, that is Jesus, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Little girl's cute, isn't she? Praying there, a uh, very uh, picture of innocence. Well, we need to have the same kind of innocence in our heart, knowing that God is good, and when good things happen to people, they're for a reason. Great is your reward in heaven. When bad things happen, rejoice. That seems so contrary. I don't want to rejoice when someone says something nasty to me, or when someone whacks me with, on the back with a, a big board or something. No. Jesus said rejoice and be glad. Great is your reward in heaven. You have to believe that. It's just as much a promise as he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. It is a promise. Believe it. Does that mean even when my reputation is ruined falsely? It could. Does it mean even if my family suffers deprivation? Yes, even though it's tough, it's hard. Does it mean even if my physical health is destroyed by others? And that has happened a number of times. People thrown in dungeons and all kinds of things done to them for their faith. John Hus burned at the stake. And that certainly affected his health, didn't it? <laughs> in a, forever. So we know that's true. Even if all I ever valued in my nation morally is dragged down through the mud and stomped on. I think some of us are beginning to wonder a little bit about this right now. Maybe this is happening now. But you know... God's in his heaven and all's right with the world and he's in control. I trust him. And even though bad things may be happening to us, even as a nation, remember that prayer is a very powerful thing. God can change things just like that if enough people believe and enough people do what is right. Even if everyone else turns away and I'm the last one standing for Christ, uh-oh, sounds like the Elijah syndrome to me. You remember Elijah, 2 Kings? Uh, first Kings uh, chapter 19 he says Lord I'm the last one here you know everyone else is is following the idol Baal and God says buckle yourself up Elijah there are 7,000 people in Jerusalem that have not bowed their knee to that idol Baal now I've got a mission for you and he sent him to make Jehu king you know and over uh, Israel and gave him some other commandments and Elijah said basically okay Lord God says quit 
whining. Quit taking pity on yourself. I have a job for you. There are some stages we may go through. Stages? Oh, well, you get the point. There are stages we may go through in persecution. And you may not realize it. The first one of these is shock. This can't be happening to me. Sometimes when bad things happen to us, maybe we think, it just can't be. We're in shock. We don't know how to handle it. The second stage may be withdrawal. This is so bad. I just don't want to talk to anybody. About Go away and leave me alone to suffer. I don't want to talk with you. And you know, a lot of people never get out of the withdrawal symptom. They take it out in the church. They take it out in God's people. They never come back to services because somebody said something nasty to me. Or they said something that was misinterpreted. And their feelings got hurt and that little chip on the shoulder just fell right off on the floor. Some people never get beyond this stage. Then there's a third stage, and that's realization. <laughs> now, Richard Harris has kind of a strange look on his face. He has, he's able to play all kinds of characters. But imagine if this were us, and then we begin to realize what's happening. And we see that, that maybe God had something in mind that, that we didn't understand. Well, maybe God had something. I better think about this. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. And then coping and overcoming. You know how people say, yes, when they score like this, right? Well, I think spiritually we need to kind of have that type of action too. Yes, with God's help, I know I can overcome. I know I can do it. doesn't matter how bad it is. God can help you overcome it if you really believe it. Maybe some of us feel we're the last of the Mohegans. Though. It's just no use trying to, to live a Christian life. Too many people are modern and, you know, they have too many ideas and they don't go by Christianity. Well, Elijah thought that I'm the last of the Mohegans. First Kings 19.10, God says, no, you're not. And you're not alone either. Now, what will it be for you and me today? What choices will we make? Is it just by chance, like rock, paper, scissors? Just whatever comes up, you know, it's just by chance. And, and really, if we happen to be persecuted, fine. But if not, if we're just lucky and stay out of harm's way, we'll be all right. No, it's not that way at all. The Bible teaches that God is in control. It's not by chance. We can choose how we react to persecution. You want to react in a bad way? <laughs> How about this? Oh, well, I'm down. I just can't get up. Remember that uh, commercial? I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, many people, you know, uh, oh, all these terrible things happen to me. I can't get up off the floor. You say, it's kind of an odd picture. A woman standing on a man's head. I didn't pick that for any reason except that I just like the picture to make my point. It could have been a man standing on a woman's head, but, you know, probably that wouldn't have gone over too well either. So this just happened to be one that I thought would, would look pretty good. You know, oh, Satan's got me down. I can't get my head up. I'm, I'm stuck. I'll never get over this. Where is the problem? The problem is within you. It's within your heart and in your mind, believing that it's all over, that nothing good can happen. Don't believe that. Be positive. Remember that God is in control. Or will it be that we believe that all things are possible through Jesus Christ? As Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Indeed, we are blessed when we're persecuted. Hard to accept, but with the right attitude, it is true. Now what about you? Are you a Christian today? Do you want to be blessed in a full way? you want to be blessed in every way that God wants to give you blessings? Give you all spiritual blessings in Christ? Ephesians 1 3. Do you want to be blessed in ways that you'd never expected? Have your prayers answered? Have that feeling that your sins have been washed away and knowing it? The promise of eternal life that you're one of the redeemed, you're one of God's chosen, that you are a child of God? You need to be a Christian the way in which the Bible teaches. Believing in Christ Jesus, repenting of past sins, confessing your faith in Christ, being baptized for remission of sins. God wants to bless you. Will you let him? While we stand and while we sing. <laughs> Thank you.